Hi everyone, welcome back to Forward Therapy. My name is Kelly Troutman. I'm a certified hand therapist. And in today's video, I just wanna give you a few options for some things that you can try if you have had just kind of a chronic aching wrist. Um, this is not for people that have had, you know, <laughs> trauma and have not gotten an x-ray. So like if you fell and you haven't gotten an x-ray, please be sure to go do that just to rule out any risk of fracture, um, you know, or other major injuries. But this is just kind of for people that have just kind of like this aching, kind of chronic wrist pain. Um, and I want to show you today just a few exercises that you can try. Remember that it typically takes three to four weeks for you to A, start a habit, um, and B, for your body to notice any change. So sometimes it does take time. It's not probably something that will help after a day or two or even a week. But you might start to notice some improvement, but ideally around that, you know, three to four weeks time, you're starting to feel a little bit of improvement. So yeah, I just want to share some exercises that you can try. And without further ado, let's get into it. Okay, so first thing I want to say is that no exercise that you are doing should cause sharp or shooting pain. So if you are noticing pain with the exercises, please stop. Please back off. You may benefit from talking with a doctor. Don't push through pain. We're not in a no pain, no gain um, place here. That's not where we want to live. So um, yeah, first thing I want to talk about is range of motion exercises for the wrist specifically. So there are a few different ways that you can do range of motion training. It's something to help with your flexibility, your mobility, um, help with inflammation, and keep the tissues moving and stretching and help to stretch out um, any scar tissue that can be forming with injury. The first version of range of motion of the wrist is gonna be active range of motion. So that is gonna be, you know, simply moving the wrist forward and backward. It's best if you try to keep your fingers relaxed and what you'll notice is they kind of straighten out when you bend your wrist and the fingers will bend slightly when you extend your wrist. So the key is not to do, you know, this kind of maneuver. You just wanna kind of keep it nice and relaxed and loose and just do as much movement as you can. That's a wrist flexion extension movement. The next movement that you can try is a wrist ulnar and radial deviation motion. And if these cause pain, um, sometimes you can do this in a, a slightly different plane of motion. So this is, you know, really a straight plane of motion. But if you think about throwing a dart, it actually puts you in a slightly diagonal plane of motion. So if you kind of pull back, and then release the dart forward. That's called a dart thrower's motion. So that can be a helpful movement to try. Next is gonna be the passive range of motion type stretches. So this is going to um, involve having the arm at your side, uh, elbow at your side, or elbow straight in front of you, just depending on how it feels. First, we're gonna go into a wrist flexion stretch. So again, just tensioning the wrist down, feeling a little bit of a stretch. You don't need to crank it or push it hard. And you usually wanna hold that position for about 10 seconds, deep breathing. The key here is that you're letting the other hand do the work. You're not actively bending it and then over pressuring it. It's all about the other hand doing the work. And then modified position is elbow at your side, bending the wrist down, same thing. And then you go into wrist extension stretching. So the most way that you can stretch those tissues, the most maximum way is with the palm facing up. But if that's painful, you can also try it with the palm facing down. Just another modification. So same thing, elbow uh, straight or bent at your side. You're letting the other hand do all the work to just gently pull the wrist back and then holding for about 10 seconds and taking some deep breaths. Now, let's say that wrist motion right now is just too painful. You can't do any of these exercises without having pain. Then I would recommend actually doing some finger tendon gliding exercises just so that you're still getting mobility of the tissues, you're still getting tendon glide, and you're still getting some inflammatory control. So for that, you're gonna start with the fingers straight. You're gonna curl into a gentle claw. No need to clench here, it's all gentle, gentle motion, claw and then fist, and then a flat fist. So the difference here is fist, fingers are kind of tucked in, 
flat fist, fingernails are untucked so you can show them off. <laughs> and then the duck bill position, the tabletop, so you can either complete your duck with the thumb or you can leave the thumb out just depending on how that feels for you. So again, claw, fist, flat fist, and then duck bill, okay? So those are some really nice mobility exercises that you can definitely start trying. Um, I'm not gonna throw an exact number on there, but I would say that when you are going through something with wrist pain, the more kind of the better. So I would say if you can stretch around the clock every two hours doing something, it doesn't have to be a full set of you know 20 reps of movement, it doesn't have to be like 10 repetitions of your passive stretches, but just try to do one movement or two movements, take you know 30 seconds, um, and every two hours try to spread that out throughout your day. Okay, so let's say that you've tried all the mobility exercises, they feel awesome and you want a little bit more or you feel like you need to kind of veer into some light strengthening or stabilization type training. That's when I would recommend starting some wrist isometric movements. So isometric means non-moving, which means that you're gonna elicit a muscle contraction. You're going to activate your muscles without doing a motion. So this is a um, slightly less stressful way to begin strength training and it really does help to promote dynamic stability. It's been shown to improve grip strength. There's a lot of really good benefits, um, but it's not gonna feel like you're lifting heavy weights. So don't expect it to feel that way. Um, I'm gonna demonstrate on my armchair. So I'm gonna just tilt my camera down a little bit so you guys can see. So it is important that you have a surface to rest your arm on because if you do not, if you try this in the air, guess what? You're going to start using your bicep and that is what we want to try to avoid. So you're going to plant your arm down. You're going to make a gentle fist, not a clenched fist, just loose fingers. And I want you to try, let me roll my sleeve up. I want you to try to keep your wrist in a straight line. And what you're going to try to do is I want you to think about bending the wrist up towards your shoulder, but your other hand is gonna come in and apply pressure. So you wanna think about your two hands playing tug of war with each other and neither is going to win that battle. So here, here I go, I'm gonna start putting some isometric resistance, I'm gonna push, I'm gonna try to resist that motion and see how my wrist is actually physically not moving. And I don't know if you can tell, you probably can't quite see that, but my muscles are starting to engage here. And so that's really what we're trying to elicit is this active muscle contraction without doing motion with resistance. So this position is wrist extension. Okay. It's good to hold for about five seconds and then relax and then repeat maybe five times. Let's try it in wrist flexion next. So again, plant that arm down, make sure that you're not using your bicep. This time you're gonna have your fingers uncurled, open. And this time you're gonna think about bringing, again, the wrist straight up towards your shoulder, but your other hand is just not gonna let it go. So let's go. Try for five, four, three, two, one, and then relax. Now let's say, let me fix this, sorry. Um, let's say that one, you know, not just one wrist is hurting, but both wrists are kind of hurting. And so doing that isometric contraction is actually hurting your other wrist. No problem. You can modify by using your forearm instead. So that way, again, remember I'm going to be planted down, but just for demo, you can use your forearm on top and then resist pressure into the forearm. Okay. So that's a nice, easy modification. Um, I really like wrist isometrics. I think that they are really kind of an underrated type of exercise. I know that a lot of times my patients think like, what am I doing? But they really help to engage the certain muscles that we're trying to engage that help to promote stability of the wrist. So, um, you know, this is a very general guidelines and I think these exercises can be really helpful for a lot of people, but there are certain cases where you know they may not be the best fit exercise, so it's okay to try them out, make sure that they don't cause pain. But if you're not noticing improvement in you know three to four weeks, and I'm not saying 100% improvement, but if there's no change, no forward change, or if things are just continuing to get worse, please just check in with your doctor so that they can 
um, examine you really and, and kind of find the right clinical pathway for you because there might be some other things that are really helpful that we just don't know. So, um, and this video is already getting too long, so certainly there's way more things that you can do in terms of activity modification, thinking about ergonomics, pain and edema management. Um, there's a lot of things that go into helping a wrist heal, not just exercise, right? But this video is already getting really long, so I don't want to um, ramble on and bore you guys any longer. So thank you so much for sticking with it. Um, maybe we'll make a second part that's kind of talking about wrist pain and some of the lifestyle things that you can do to help yourself, um, which I know nobody really likes to think about, but it is actually very important. Um, I'll leave you with this one thought. Uh, Wrist pain oftentimes is like having a rock in your shoe or any kind of repetitive strain injury or, you know, we can stretch the foot when there's a rock in there and it might help a little bit. It might alleviate the tension a little bit, but if that rock is still in there, it's still going to cause problems. It's still going to cause pain. So, um, the lifestyle stuff is actually very important, but exercise is also really important and just creating that habit is going to be probably really, really helpful. Anyway, thanks for listening to me ramble. Um, I'm going to sign off and end the video here. And I just want to thank you guys so much for watching. And please subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Give it a thumbs up if you liked this video. And comment below um, if you have any future videos that you would like to see.